Hi again, here we are to continue talking about SpriteKit. In the last video, we made a simple scrolling background and we added the ground plane to it. And it looks something like this, right? So our ground plane is scrolling by. We just have these colored boxes now. And our guy is speeding up because we're applying force, right? We're going to use the apply force, but uh, let's fix that so our, our guy runs at a constant rate, okay? So we have this update method, and I talked about that in the last video, and we used it to call scroll landscapes, right, to manage the, the shuffling of the landscapes, right, and have them scroll continuously. Um, but now let's use it to apply um, or to move our, our, our player at a constant rate, okay? So one of the things that happens with this, and it'll be hard to see here, let me um, get the simulator and change the scale here to something. Um, I guess I already have it really big there, but it's hard to see here. But you watch on yours, and what you'll see at the bottom here is you'll see the frame rate. It says 30 frames a second, right? Sometimes it says 29, sometimes it says 28, sometimes it says 30, sometimes it says a little more than 30. Um, this number changes, right? You just saw it kind of slowed down there, right? But anyway, that number changes. And what happens here on update is update is the computer's trying to call it 60 frames a second actually and we're getting something lower than that right and also the time can fluctuate so what update does is it gives us the current time and so this is essentially the number of seconds since the program started running okay so by taking this number and so it'll always be like something less than a second right so if it was if the value here was one, then we know one second has, had gone by, right? But if we, you know, sometimes it'll be like 1.385, you know, it'll be a big fractional number, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to define a variable, okay? I'll, I'll just actually just put it here so we can see it in relation to update, but we can actually store it up here with all of our other properties, right, um, when we're done. And we'll make a variable called um, last update time, Okay. And we're going to set it to a CF time interval. Why not a double? I don't know. But uh, it's going to be CF time interval. Okay? And we'll give it an initial value of zero. So there we go. So we've got that set up. And now what we're going to do is at the very top here, we're going to set, um, we're going to say let delta time equal, um, current time minus last update time, okay? So delta time is the difference between the current time and the last time. So this is how much time has elapsed between the last, you know, the last update call and the current update call right now. Okay, so that tells us exactly how many seconds have passed, and it'll be something less than a second. It'll be a small number, right? Um, there is a little glitch though that every once in a while the number will, it'll be really large for some reason or actually the very first time you run the program the number is very large and it kind of screws everything up so what we're going to do is we're going to say hey you know if um delta time actually i, I call that delta let's call it delta time right so i'm going to ask i'm going to say hey you know if delta time is greater than one Okay, so that means it's more than one second. Really, this should be happening 60 times a second, but if it ends up like really large for some reason, what we'll do is we'll say delta time um, equals uh, 1 60th of a second. Okay, so just 1 divided by 60. Okay, and then when we're all done with that, what we'll do is we'll say um, last update time equals current time. And then that way, the next time we... Um, we, you know, we, we have update, then we've, we've captured the last update time, so it shows up again here, right? Okay? So anyway, so there's our, there's our delta time, and then how are we going to use this? I have a thing here. You know what I should do is I should, um, what is this guy? He thinks it's a double, huh? I don't know why it doesn't like that. Let's see. Um, change. Oh, because I did, I did a let there. It should have been a var. Sorry. Um, anyway, there we go, right? So that looks pretty good. So how are we going to use this, right? So let's try something here. I'm going to um, going to 
comment the player object out, this, this apply force. Okay, so this is no longer in effect, right? And our player is invisible right now. We can't see it because of the Z index. So I'm going to go up to setup here. And when we set the player, I'm going to say, you know, player dot Z position equals, you know, 99. Okay, we'll change that number later, but this will ensure that the player is in front of everybody else, hopefully. So we'll give it a quick test. And there's our player. Okay, um, hard to see there. Let me test them again, right? Remember that background color is random. So, um, yeah, there we go, right? So we can see them now. It's not scrolling right now because the player needs to move forward and the camera follows, right? And that's what's going to create the scrolling action. So what we're going to do is now to make our player move, you know, what we could do is we could do this, right? Um, instead of using apply force, you know, we could say player.position.x, you know, plus equals, you know, uh, five, okay? And what this would mean is that every update, our player object would move forward five pixels, Okay. And there we go. And there's our player. You know, we can see the background scrolling there. And there's the other background. We're just moving five pixels every frame. And this looks pretty smooth. If we had other stuff going on here, the frame rate may not be as constant as this. And it may be very subtle, but you might see a little bit of a slowdown and speed up, um, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of delta time to smooth that out, okay? And here's how we're going to do it. Okay, so um, imagine that we want the player to move at a particular rate, a number of pixels per second, okay? So let's say if the, the player is supposed to move at 40 pixels per second, okay? So what we'll do is we know that delta time is the number of seconds that have passed since the last frame right, because this is the current time minus the time from the last frame. So this is some fraction of a second, right? So imagine that this was, you know, half a second had passed from, you know, the current time to the last update time. So if we were to multiply this times delta time, which would be, you know, 0.5 if a half second had passed here, then, you know, we would multiply this times 40 and our guy would move 20 pixels forward in a half a second. If one second had passed here, then it would move the full 40, right? If a tenth of a second had passed by, then it would move four, okay? So I'm going to get an error here because delta time is a, you know, a double, and then this, you know, X right here needs to be a CG float. So, um, you know, and I can check, right? If I option click on that, you can see it says double. So what we'll do is we'll say CG float, right? We'll just convert. Um, delta time to CG float and then we there we go right so we'll save that and now we'll test it so this may not show like it's hard to see the subtle problem here but this is a um, you know what I'm gonna do that again because those random colors that time were not good colors right or they were hard to see um, oh there we go right so there's our our object and he's moving at a constant 40 pixels per second okay and what's nice about this is we can increase this value and um, and our object can speed up, you know. So if we want the game to go faster, we can have our, ob our, our player move faster by increasing this number. Let me throw another idea out here. You know, while this works pretty good um, for, you know, depending on how everything else is set up, like this could work just fine. Um, since we're using a physics body, we might want to set you know, use apply force also to move the object, and that could be an option depending on how our game plays. Another choice that we have, and if we're using physics, this might actually be good, is to use the physics body and set the velocity. So as a third option, we could say player.physicsbody um, dot velocity, right? And if we option click on velocity, you'll see that it's a CG vector. So we can set this to, uh, you know, equal to a CG vector. And a CG vector is just like a, it's pretty much just a, um, like a CG point, right? It has two values. Instead of X and Y, they're DX and DY, right? So, you know, DX is the distance to move on the X. And DY is the distance to move on the Y, 
okay? So what we can do is we can say, hey, you know, um, we're going to move 0 on the y. We may have to change this to get the jump working. So we might want to set this value, you know, to the 160 that we have here when you're touching, right? Um, but for right now, I'll leave that out. And then we might want to multiply this by the delta time so that it adjusts depending on the fluctuation in the frame rate, right? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll say, you know, how about, um, you know, 40 times delta time. Oh, yeah, and I got a, um, actually, maybe, maybe that would work here because I think you can make a vector from a double and it's happy with that, right? Um, for, for velocity, though, we might have to use a larger number because this number, 40, it works in pixels per frame, but the physics simulation doesn't work in that same scale. It has a different scale, right? But we'll try this out and we can just adjust this number. I'm just throwing these out there because these all behave a little bit differently and they have different effects depending on how you're going to apply physics to your game. So, um, you know, depending on how your game works, you know, if your game is using very little physics interaction, then this is fine. If you're using a lot of physics interaction, then maybe this one or, or this one would be a better choice, okay? So anyway, we'll give that a test, right? And uh, there it is. It's moving very slowly. Wait, let's let's try a larger number here. What if I do a um, hundred times delta time, right? Remember, I had to increase the. Yeah, maybe a hundred is not enough. Let's do like three hundred. How about that? Again, like these numbers here um, for velocity, anything applies to that applies to the physics body works with the um, the physics simulation, um, and that um, let's try eight hundred, right? Wondering why that's moving so slowly when it falls down. Oh, because I set the dy to zero, so like the gravity pulls it down, but then I'm setting it to zero. Um, I should probably get the current velocity and y and put it here. But anyway, you can see that that's kind of working, right? So anyway, that's just another option that you might use for um, for setting the, the the motion of your of your physics objects, right? So anyway, so that got us started there. Okay, there's a whole concept there for you of delta time, and we'll make use of that later. And anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll continue and improve our game in the next video.